You good? And we're on live. Yeah. All right. So welcome back. We're no longer allowed to say we'll talk to you next week because it never happens. We need to stop jinxing ourselves. Yeah. So yeah. Um, this is the live recording of Homegirls Episode 7, which is Bugs. Yep. And let's get started per the huge with a nice little video. This video is disgusting, Aces. Have you seen it? I don't think I got the chance to see it yet, actually. Okay. So. Well, are you ready? Yeah. Hold on. Let me just make sure that... Everything is good. As usual, you've had a multitude of technical difficulties this afternoon, which included, but not limited to, the microphones not even working. So. Yeah. Also, this, why does this, why do I always look humongous? Look. Now that I'm. Okay, cool. Okay. It's working. It's working. Okay. It is working? Yeah. Okay. I look horrible, but it's working. Yep. <laughs> All right. Let's watch this fantastic video. So this is officially. Homegirls episode seven, season three, episode seven, which is Bugs. 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 The Homegirls Club is getting out of hand with new folks. Plus, we have injuries, and they throw roast fired from the barn, and the Indians throw a ball on a pin in the ground. What is this? The roast pin is flying over the field in a motion on the grain of a local fishery. Flames are suspected as the Navarone Islands get close to this pen. They're intending to test the new water pin as well as connect the hose. Let's take a look. Well, if their tail can pull it, then they are flying it at the front ropes of the pen. This is meant to get air in the ropes of the boat to keep it hanging. And the big one with the knees of the weather Indian is checking. Okay, well, that's disgusting. And that also explains why when those roaches are coming at you, they're coming at you so yeah, fast. the little noises was in that oh, video. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was pretty gross. Yeah. I also appreciate the irony that the roaches are obsessed with cleanliness where they be dirtying up their our houses. That's so weird. That's just gross. It is very nasty. I hate bugs with a passion, so if I will scream at the top of my lungs. <laughs> like, no. No joke, like, the other day I came into this uh, house, and there were, like, six or seven dead roaches everywhere, and one of them's legs were still moving, and when I hit it with the broom, it flipped upside down and came running right for me. Oh, my God, no. You know what happened to me at the old office? I walked into the door one day, and a cockroach <gasps> fell and, like, smacked my arm. No. And then it, yes, and then it was on the ground, and I was like, I didn't know what it was, like, what hit me, and then, like, I saw it on the ground, and I was like, oh, no. That <laughs> is legit a nightmare. I wanted to scream, but, like, someone was there, so I was like, hi. <laughs> I was like, hi. But, oh, my, oh God. my God, it was terrifying. My first... Like when I first, I lived in League City, which is, for those of you not from Houston, it's south of Houston. It's near to the beach. So they have a lot of those roaches. And by the way, when we're saying roaches in Texas, we have a different definition of roaches than other people. We yeah. have giant dinosaur sized roaches. Some of them fly too. Yeah. They're like prehistorically sized roaches. They are the size of your palm and they are disgusting. Yeah. And they're not, people think of roaches as uh, those. You know, German roaches is what people usually think of, I should say. And that is a, p a pest. Yeah. That means your house is really dirty. And that's an infestation. Yeah. The tree roaches is what we have in Texas. Although you can get German roaches in Texas, it's the tree roaches that are humongous and they're terrifying. And that's what eat, fell off of the ceiling and hit ECs was a tree yeah. roach. It was gross. And I'm not even joking when I say they're the size of your palm. No, like, yeah, they're huge. They're like, humongous. Literally. One once flew and landed on Chris's head at our apartment in League City. And yeah, but before I even knew about the roach, before I even knew these roaches existed, it's like the second or third week we moved into our apartment, I pushed the shower curtain back to take a shower and one flew out of the shower curtain and I was just like, I want to go home. I don't oh, want to no. live here anymore. <laughs> they have dinosaur sized oh, cockroaches no. here. This is like hell. This is terrible. At least you don't live in Australia, though. Right? Yeah. Okay. Well, that's <laughs> true. On that note, hi, I'm Mary. And I'm Isis. And we're the homegirls. Today, we're talking about bugs. Bugs. 
quick disclaimer though we've already covered termites in season one yeah so we're not going to talk about termites at all today yeah no these are these are different kinds of bugs yeah i'm sure honestly like most of you have heard about so oh i'm sure you've heard of all of them yeah but we're because we're following the theme of household dangers we're going to talk about bugs you deal with in your house that you can see i mean sometimes you can't see them yeah yeah that's true in most cases you can see these bugs termites you hardly ever see yeah they're they're hiding they're hiding but these bugs these are the bugs that are crawling up your leg when you're just trying to have a nice evening and i'm talking about roaches bed bugs fire ants and fruit flies obviously those are not the only bugs we deal with in our house shout out to spiders hey yo yeah although i feel like i don't really see many spiders like at least uh, in my no, house. And if I do, they're like little tiny spiders. I agree. I definitely saw bigger and scarier spiders when I lived in Virginia. Yeah. They have some like wolf spiders. Oh, no. And those things will act like they're dead. And so you'll like go to like sweep them with a brush and they'll jump up and like, oh, my God, it's terrifying. Yeah. It's yeah. absolutely terrifying. That ain't it. Yeah. <laughs> um, but again, thank goodness we don't live in Australia. Yeah. So uh but we chose these four bugs the roaches bed bugs fire ants and fruit flies because they're a great combination of gross scary and just plain annoying i agree yeah and um full disclaimer Isis and i are equally terrified of bugs we are not about that life yeah no i'm all about girl power but when it comes to bugs i can't i can't do it me either i can't do it me either i, I draw the line yeah, I will just scream and run away. Exactly. And snakes. <laughs> I don't like snakes. Either. Oh, yeah. No. 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 That's probably even worse than a bug. <laughs> Did I ever tell you this total digression uh, that once I was biking in Terry Hershey Park, which, by the way, if you're not from Houston, it's a big, like, seven or eight mile bike trail. And I was biking past this terraced part and something fell off the terrace and landed next to my bike. Like as I was biking past, it was a snake. Oh my God. A snake full on fell from a terrace past my entire body and landed right next to my bike. I biked really fast. That's scary. I was like, that is a sneak. That's scary. It's a full on sneak. So yeah, (laughs) not about that life. Fun fact, Chris and I used to own a snake. Oh, wow. Yeah. My uh, uncle used to have a snake, too, like as a pet. Like a, a ball python. Oh. Very common. You want to know what happened to that snake? It tried to bite me. It charged me, and then I'm like, you're done. I'm done. I'm oh done with you. Oh, my God. Yeah, because someone decided to get transferred to Japan and leave me with a snake for one year. That snake did not last a whole year. Oh, no. You only bite me once. Try to bite me once. Yeah. I'm not about that life yeah. either. <laughs> not about the snake bite life. So, all right digression over i apologize um let's go ahead and start the history what do you think let's do it let's do it now for the history i decided to divide each bug into its own section yeah we usually start with the greeks and romans right yeah uh in this case we're not unusually we are not starting with greeks and romans today because it gets more terrifying oh no let's start with the roach okay fossil rest rest i'm starting with the roach again start with the roach Fossil Records says the modern co- Why can't, why can't I say Third it? Time's a charm. All right. Fossil records of the ancestor of the modern cockroach go back 300 million years. It's changed very little since the Carboniferous period. That was 250 million years ago. So they had about 50 million years oh, of no, evolution. Yeah. Bugs have been around forever. Yeah, I know. Since the dinosaurs. They survived the extinction event. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Like, they were, and they were big, too. Like, if you go to the Natural Science Museum, they have, like, bugs over there. Yeah. Like, and they were g- giant. You think the ones in Texas are huge. No, these are like, like, these were, like, a little pet. These like, are, like, the size of ECs. Like, yeah. how tall are you? Like, 5'6"? Five, five, I'm, like, 5'4". Five, 5'4", four. Five, four? yeah. They were, like, 5'4". Yeah. Yeah. That's nasty. That's terrifying. Um, so, yeah, they just, they, they actually... Uh, survived an extinction event where the old joke comes when the nuclear holocaust happens the only two things that will survive are cockroaches and share have you ever heard that one i actually haven't okay (laughs) well it's an old it's an old joke uh but the reason for that is everyone knows that cockroaches survived the initial extinction event yeah in um about this is really funny between uh 15,000 and 33,000 years ago uh, a cave painting was done in africa that actually showed cockroaches so they have been tormenting us for a long time, 
prehistoric man yeah. is even like, I hate these. I hate That's these crazy. little nasty things. Yeah. Not surprised, but crazy. <laughs> so um, basically, what in the time of the dinosaurs, the hypothesis that they probably lived were for two reasons. They can flatten themselves. But second, they, it appears that these ancient roaches were cave dwellers. So you had to go pretty deep into a cave. Okay. Have you ever seen Indiana Jones in the Temple of Doom? I don't know if I've seen that one specifically, but I have seen Indiana Jones. That's when they're Is in that one of the newer ones? No, that's when they're in India, and it's kind of racist because okay. the Indians are like crazy ripping people's hearts out, and that, yeah, they drop that guy in a vat of lava. Seen yeah. okay. I've seen like probably the newer one. Okay. Yeah, not that one, though. All right. Well, uh... It's it's a cra- it's a wild ride. It is a roller coaster, okay. let me tell you. But at one point, the main female character is walking through a room full of bugs, and they're crawling all over her. Ooh. And the roaches are in that. But that's how I like to imagine the roaches in the prehistoric times. They were just like a room full of yeah, cockroaches. or like the mummy. Yeah. Oh, yeah. there's a better one. Yeah, yeah. First of all, Brendan Fraser was fine in that movie. Absolutely fine. He mm. could rescue me from the undead any day. <laughs> I remember I went to Universal Studios and they have like I think they have like a mummy ride they do. and they have like a part where they like blow like the wind so it's like all the bugs. Oh, it's scary. Did you see that? You've seen the movie. A long time ago. Yeah, like, so they like crawl up under yeah. people's. That's not a roach; it's a scarab. But you're right. I like that the same kind of idea yeah. of them swarming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, they're thinking that the reason they show up in these cave paintings is because it's probably around that time, thirty-three thousand to fifteen thousand years ago that roaches crawled out of their caves and started living with humans so that's why we start to see them at this point in cave paintings because people are like oh what is that because even back then roaches made us scream like little tiny girls not surprised yeah (laughs) so really that's all i have for roaches because i feel like we don't need to talk about them that much yeah we know what we know be a little boring they have been tormenting (laughs) us since the dawn of time we know what they are (laughs) yeah so i that is it that's all i have for roaches okay cool. let's talk about pet bugs thankfully i have never had bed bugs oh my god you see i had them in college oh, my no. freshman year of college was a miserable time for me i was clinically depressed i had a terrible roommate and i had bed bugs oh no and they literally i woke up one night and i could feel them eating me i was just covered in welts that's so sad you know i i <laughs> I think it said here that bed bugs make you depressed too. Like yes, they do. More because you'll get because in, you get paranoid. And yeah. Stuff, yeah. And my parents couldn't even help me because they were in freaking Disney World. Uh, <laughs> wow. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> great job, mom and dad, or mom and Ray in my case. But uh, yeah, no, they were in Disney World, so they couldn't even come and like help me. I had to sanitize everything. It was true. I cried, you see. I cried I and I cried and I cried. And my roommate did not give a poop about oh me. Oh, my God. She was terrible. I don't know if, if she will ever hear this podcast, but we parted on good terms. But okay. I will tell you that the initial, like, she was really mean and oh, scary. Oh no. Yeah, yeah. Oh so, no. anyway, <laughs> this does have to do with the Greeks and Romans, actually. Oh, <laughs> bed here bugs. We go. Okay, okay. <laughs> so, their Latin name is C. Lectorlarius. And they believe that it originated in the Middle East in caves that were inha- inhabited by humans and bats. So once again, we have some qu- cave dwellers here. Mm-hmm. But it's the ancient Greeks where we first get the mention of bed bugs. Okay. So it's the ancient Greeks that first write about bed bugs around 400 BCE. And they've, archaeologists have also found fossil evidence of bed bugs, which is insane. Wow. The Greeks had a method of getting rid of bed bugs, which involved hanging a hair or a stag at the foot of the bed and a hair means like a rabbit what the hell yeah i don't i don't think that works what i guess maybe they thought that the, they would suck the blood out no, of the, the yeah the rabbit I, or something I, maybe it did i don't know i just feel like that's yeah that's interesting so. anyway we return now to the romans with pliny um remember we talked about pliny he witnessed the eruption of pompeii mm-hmm. uh, he wrote a book called pliny's natural history and that's Pliny the Elder in 77 AD. Now, Pompeii eru- erupts in 79. So okay. in it, the bu- he names the bed bug. So that's where we get the word C. lectolarius, which stands for Cymex lectolarius. Cymex means bugs. And lectolarius means couch or bed. Look at that, Pliny the Elder being really <laughs> Captain Obvious <laughs> there. Nice, nice. He claimed, Pliny claimed, that bed bugs had a medicinal value. I would like to disagree with Pliny on that one. 
Yeah, yeah, I agree. Bro, what you smoking? Yeah, I know. Um, 600 CE, so this is 600 after the BCE, in, so 600 common era. Mm-hmm. Bed bugs has spread to Italy and China. In the 1200s, they reached Germany, and in the late 1400s, they reached France. So look at that. Bed bug infestation was a problem for everybody, not just poor people or middle class people, but rich people as well. Okay. Um, basically, the way we were sleeping encouraged the bed bugs. A lot of people shared beds. Um, you know, there was a standard of cleanliness that wasn't quite what we're up to today. Yeah. It's not until the late 1600s that bud bugs actually made their way to England. So because England was an island, a lot of this is coming from trade, right? So um, bed bugs travel in clothes. They travel in furniture. Um, but interestingly, the reason that England wasn't infested with bed bugs until the late 1600s is because in 66, 1666, London burnt down. There was a big fire, oh, okay. burned down almost the whole city. It was really, really traumatic. It was the reign of Charles II kind of a bad year for him all the way around because there was also a plague that happened around that time as well (laughs) um anyway the reason the bed bugs get to london is because london has to buy all of this stuff after it burns down so the bed bugs come over and all the stuff they have to buy Mm -hmm. of course soon after that bed bugs made it to north america right because we're already in virginia in 1666 Mm -hmm. so not long after that once it hits england it's going to obviously hit uh, what becomes the United States, the 13 original colonies. Um, did you watch Schoolhouse Rock? Schoolhouse, is that the one with Jack Black? No, okay. that's School of Rock. Okay, yeah. okay so <laughs> there used to be these cartoons that would explain, like, the history. Oh, okay, yeah, and, like, definitely have not seen okay. it. Okay, well, there was a song, like, called 50 Nifty United States. Oh, okay. It came from the 13 original colonies. Okay, yeah, okay. That's what I was about to say. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> Jokes are wasted. Um, now, um, the funny thing, uh, when I was doing my research, this is an exact quote. What that's is that? a computer. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> Quick pause here. Okay. Hold on. I need some caffeine. Okay. The funny thing is, uh, when I was researching bed bugs, this is a direct quote, um, once the the bed bugs had reached England, it wasn't long before it hitched a ride on a ship bound for North America. Bed bug encounters in European colonies were very common. From here, it was all downhill for the Americas. (laughs) So we peaked in uh, the late 1600s, clearly. (laughs) Peaked. uh, So the Americans are the ones that start to do aggressive extermination techniques, and they use a variety of them from the 1700s to the 1900s. Um, peat fires were recommended, but it didn't work well because people often died from carbon monoxide poisoning or smoke inhalation. Okay. Nice. Cyanide fumigation was used, but, you know, people kind of died from that, too. That sounds like a horrible idea. Yep. <laughs> In 1930, the use of electric heating became popular and bed bug numbers, numbers soared, and it was reported that one in three homes in North American cities had bed bugs. Gross. In 1915, excuse me, 1950 is when DDT comes around. We talked about DDT in our pesticide yeah. Oh, yeah, episode. Yeah, yeah, we did, we did. Pesticide is very, very effective for eliminating bed bugs, not so effective for our health, as we learned. True. So from the 1950s onward, they were using DDT because it was working. We know, we know how that ended. About as healthy <laughs> as the cyanide fumigation. Yeah. Today, one in five Americans has had an encounter with bed bugs, including myself. Thankfully, not me. Pest management firms have reported an 81% increase in bed bug related calls since 2002. Cities with the largest infestation include New York City, Baltimore, Washington, D.C., Cincinnati, Columbus, Detroit, Chicago, Dallas, Los Angeles, and San Francisco. And why all those cities? Do you know why, E.C.? Is it just because they're big cities? They're travel, okay, okay. big travel cities. Okay. So uh, New York, pretty obvious. Baltimore is a huge port of entry. Yeah. Washington, D.C. Uh, as well. Cincinnati is actually a big port of entry, too. A lot of people don't realize oh, that, but okay, Cincinnati okay. is. Columbus is the capital of Ohio. Detroit, same same deal. Mm-hmm. Michi- uh, Detroit, Michigan is a big city. Chicago, that's an obvious one. Yeah. Dallas is actually a big port of entry, too. Oh. People don't realize that. They yeah, think Houston that. is, but Dallas is. Um. 
Los Angeles, that's pretty obvious, right? Yeah. And San Francisco is a big port of entry yeah. for like Hawaii and Japan yeah, and stuff yeah. like Not that. Not surprised by by all those. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, bed bugs are a huge problem before COVID and before um, what vape lung or popcorn lung. We had that bed bug sensationalism where like it seemed that everybody was getting bed yeah. bugs for a while. Yeah terrifying i'm so glad i've never had to experience that <laughs> when i travel i would be very paranoid no i you should be when i travel i literally put my luggage in the bathroom or on oh, the luggage wow. rack because i'm so paranoid about bed bugs wow they're no joke yeah. they really aren't um and they're almost this is really ominous folks and we'll talk about this later when it comes to um my last part but bed bugs are almost impossible to get rid of oh my god yeah so. yeah all I right mean, fire yeah, ants the fire interest, ants. Yeah. The interesting. Th- have you ever been attacked by fire ants? Yeah. I have. Yeah. I think I don't think there's anybody in you East actually Texas. step on like a freaking ant hill and then yeah, they just go. I don't think there's anyone in Texas who hasn't been attacked by fire ants at least once. Yeah. <laughs> um, my mom got attacked by fire ants once. She didn't even know what was going on. She's like, "What's biting me?" And then she was like screaming, and I was like, "It's fire ants! Take off your socks because they get in your socks. Yeah, they you go can't in. get them out. You got to take off your shoes and everything." Like, <laughs> nasty so originally they were black isn't that interesting really yeah now we think fire ants were red right but they're originally black it's a black imported fire ant accidentally imported from south america into mobile alabama in 1918 so it's relatively recently yeah wow um there's the red ant so we start to see the red ant in the 1930s and the red ant is actually what we see prevalent today. So Mississippi and Alabama are the only ones that still have the fi- the black fire ant. We, uh, the rest of the South, suffers from the red fire ant. Okay. Um, so they infest more than 260 million acres of land in nine s- southeastern states, including Florida, Georgia, South Carolina, Tennessee, Alabama, Mississippi, Arkansas, Texas, hey yo, and Oklahoma. It's true. Fire ants, man. They're scary. They are scary. Uh, they'll kill you. I'm sure you'll talk about that. Yeah. You can die. Yeah. You can become allergic to them and stuff. So they're an invasive species, um, and they're really abundant, displacing many native ant species. And they bet it's going to eventually spread to Arizona and the Pacific Coast. Oh, wow. Yeah, because they're so prevalent yeah. and invasive. So I kind of buzzed over ants a bit, and that's only because I talk a lot about ants in the termite okay. episode. Yeah, we do. We yeah. talk about So them a lot. if you want more ants, check out the termite yeah. episode. I think it's, a, it's in season one. It should be in season one. should be one. season one. The WDIs. Let's talk about fruit flies. <sighs> Listen to the Latin word for fruit flies. Drosophilia mel- melanogaster. Melanogaster. Very weird. Drosophilia melanogaster. Very interesting name. <laughs> I know. That's a big name for a little pest. Yeah. So they think flies in general likely started somewhere in Africa, but flies have never been found living, fruit flies, I should say, have never been fi- found living in the wild. So there's no such thing as a wild fruit fly. Wow. Yeah. So that's where scientists are kind of stumped. They obviously think that they probably, you know, they they probably came from flies in Africa. But at some point, when did they change from being like horse flies or, you know, to like being inside and to being a fruit fly? They don't really know. Um, Recent survey of fruit flies found sub Saharan andrus and what sub Saharan ancestry. So it's definitely coming from Africa. Oh, okay, okay. Um, they think they fruit flies are based on that genetic detail probably came from Zambia and Zimbabwe. But again, they are still not quite sure what changed it from a fly to a fruit fly. Yeah. Um, what this is the biggest hypothesis is that um, the sand tribes, which is a native tribe um, in Zambia and Zimbabwe, uh, used to eat this fruit called the marula fruit for thousands of years. So they found in this cave in where the sand tribe used to be located, 25 million walnut-sized um, marula pits that they think are 8,000 to 12,000 years old. Jesus. And they think that... They were using, obviously, this was like a trash dump for the fruit pits. Yeah. And they're thinking when they threw the pits in there, the normal flies 
kind of like got addicted to them Mm -hmm. and then just started getting addicted to fruit or sweet trash runoff in general okay and that is that was probably the turning point that led to an evolution of a fruit fly that's crazy yeah but like i said they still really don't know all of that is (laughs) hypothesis right science um, the interesting thing about fruit flies, the other interesting thing about fruit flies is they're one of the more common type of bugs used in genetic research, and they have contributed to five Nobel Prize winning studies. Wow. I know. That's so interesting. Good job, fruit fly. Good job, yeah. <laughs> Speaking of which, we currently have a fruit fly Yeah, that's why I sighed really loudly whenever she said fruit flies. <laughs> I was like... <laughs> it's they're like crawling all over our computer I think it's screen also just the time of year too cause yeah because it's hot because i also have them at home like i oh, had a okay. problem a few weeks ago and now i've gotten rid of most of them but there's still like a few stragglers just yeah. flying around i think they might be in our vent system here which is why chris is gonna spray yeah he's gonna have to spray them they're i mean they're really annoying and honestly this spoiler you know they don't do much to you but they're, they're just, just mostly they're just mostly annoying yeah but Good on you, fruit flies, for winning five Nobel prizes. Yeah, look at that. Who would have thought? <laughs> a fruit, I like. There is a fruit fly out there that's more accomplished than any human being. More accomplished than, than me. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> um, so yeah, fruit flies have led to the understanding of thousands of genes that are also found in humans. So they're apparently they're one of the most commonly used insects for genetic research. Wow. Yeah. That's so. Crazy. Slow clap for the fruit fly, I guess. Yeah. Good job. We are not <laughs> worthy. Um, and that's it. That's that's my end of the okay, that's the cool. history. That's I mean, only slightly traumatic. Yeah, it's not that bad. And you know, I will say I'm about to talk about the health concerns and they're not that bad. Remember you know, what we said. Compared From now to, on, yeah. things are gonna get things are lightening up compared yes. to the other episodes we had. Yes. Like there's still bugs and you know, I don't want them either way. <laughs> But it's not too scary. It's not too scary. Honestly, I just don't like when the roaches charge at you. Yeah. I'm not a, like, why? You think they're doing that on purpose? I don't know. My, my my parents are always like, they're more scared of you than you are of them. I don't I'm believe like, that for sure? a second. Because you can stomp them and they won't die. You know I just how hate hard stomping it is? them too because it's like the crunch. It's is crunchy. Like- my little doggy will put them off. in his mouth and <gasps> run around with them because he loves them. What? Yeah. Oh, no. And he'll, he used to hide them in the couch so he could play with them later. So you'd sit on the couch and you'd be like, ew, what's this? And it would be like a dead, a giant dead roach. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Yes. That's absolutely terrifying. I know. That and is- that, by the way, is Finn, who is guest starred on a couple yeah. of our podcasts. That's absolutely terrifying. Yeah. Yeah. No, that he, ain't it. <laughs> he's such a little jerk. <laughs> So, okay, sorry. That's funny, though. I can't believe he does that. <laughs> I know. Oh, my God. Okay, so let's start off talking about the health concerns with each of these little little bugs. We're going to start with German cockroaches, which is which are the bad ones. least favorite, for they're, sure. They're not the big, they're not the tree roaches. Yeah. The German cockroaches are the bad ones. Yeah, they're the bad ones, not the giant monster ones that yeah. we still hate them. But you Yes, know. exactly. So roaches can foul food, damage wallpaper and books, eat glue from furniture, and produce an un- <laughs> yeah I didn't know that and produce an unpleasant odor. Some homeowners are allergic to roaches, and the pest can contaminate food with certain bacterial diseases <laughs> yep. that result in food poisoning, dysentery, or diarrhea. Ah, yeah. you mean dysentery? Okay, I don't know how to say dysentery it. is diarrhea. Oh, like diarrhea remember on the or Oregon diarrhea? Trail, <laughs> you have died of dysentery. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, and diarrhea. <laughs> They spread bacteria that cause food poisoning, such as salmonella and shigella. I don't know how to say it. Let me see it. Oh, I've never seen that one. Shigella. What is? It's it's a, some type of bacteria. Okay. So yeah, uh, German roaches also might carry coliform bacteria, streptococcus, and staphylo. I don't know if I'm saying the right. staph infection. Yeah, staphylococcus. Staph- okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Staph infections. So, German cockroaches produce additional eggs after mating and mature at a quick rate. Therefore, a large infestation is more likely, and this will increase the possibility of asthma complications and allergies. German uh, cockroaches' feces, which means poop, um, (laughs) and saliva contain problematic proteins and allergens, which may trigger asthma attacks. I did know that, that roaches, yeah. Yeah, they yeah, Because they're, that. they're nasty. Yeah, that's... And again, these are the German ro- ones, not the... Not the giant monster ones, yeah. yeah. 
Um, in densely populated cities, scientists have identified a correlation between roach presence and the incidence of asthma. Cockroach allergens cause lots of allergic reactions, especially in children, and these allergens build up in deposits of droppings, secretions, cast skins, and dead bodies of roaches. Yeah, that's scary. Yeah. Yeah. So if, if the population increases to a large number, the cockroaches will quickly need to find new food sources. This can include food residue on human skin or mucus excretions around the eyes, yeah. nose, and mouth. <laughs> the German cockroaches can chew and will gladly chomp down with a painful bite, which may cause mild skin irritation. So they can bite you. Stop it. They can bite you. Stop. If you find cockroach feces in your house, vacuuming and cleaning affected areas with warm water and soap can help lessen al- allergic reactions. So mostly allergies and diarrhea is the main, <laughs> and diarrhea. Is the main thing here. <laughs> But that's scary. I didn't know that they could bite you. I didn't know that they could actually. Okay, speaking of bite, have you ever heard of a kissing bug? I've heard of it. I've heard of a kissing bug, yeah. Okay, so they, we actually have them in Houston. Okay. And they... I think I've seen them before. I think I might have seen one before. That's really bad if you did, because they're really deadly. Oh. Yeah, so let me pull up. Hold oh. on. <laughs> this is actually a bug that can get in your house, so we should talk kissing about it. Kissing bug. Yeah. It causes what's called Chagas disease. Oh, my God. And it's a bug that crawls onto your face at night and bites your mouth and then poops on your mouth. No. And that... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that poop causes a... Basically, like, a, a, a bug or, like, a parasite to get into your body that will lead to heart attack or heart failure. That's absolutely terrifying. It is. <laughs> So they've started to find them in Houston. It used to just be a South American problem. I've definitely heard of it before. I've definitely yeah. Heard of it. Don't know. If, hopefully, I don't. It so, sounds so familiar. That's why. Like, it's unusual for them to get in a house house. Yeah. So the reason there's such a problem in South America is because people tend to live in like, um, I mean, not everyone. I don't want to make a generalization, yeah, right? Yeah. But people do tend to live in semi-permanent dwellings. Yeah. So that are either made out of like flimsy yeah metals or woods or even like adobe type mm-hmm. brick or you know what i'm talking yeah, about yeah. and their roofs tend to be some again i don't want to make a generalization but some areas of south america you get roofs that are like palm or like yeah, yeah. grasses I you. and that's when they get in so it's hard for them to get into a building like this one that's like an actual building yeah they tend but the reason why it's so prevalent in south america with the the people who are in poverty is because yeah. they're not living in proper housing okay so they do exist here in Houston, but it would be very unlikely you or I would ever encounter okay. one. And it's also apparently really hard to actually get the infestation because you have to wipe the poop on your face. So it's like maybe like you wipe your face okay. accidentally, which is, again, why you should never touch your face. But Always wash your hands. Yeah. I'm sorry. That was a digression. And now we are all terrified. Yeah, that's scary. All right. Let's <laughs> talk about bed bugs. <laughs> <laughs> bed bug health concerns. So as we know, bed bugs feed on humans. And other warm-blooded hosts in order to survive and reproduce. <laughs> they find a host by detecting carbon dioxide emitted from warm-blooded people or animals and respond to warmth slash, slash moisture. moisture. In order to feed, they penetrate the skin of the host and inject a salivary fluid that contains an anticoagulant. I think that's how you Coagulant. Say it? Coagulant. I'm very bad with these pronunciations. What would I do without Mary? <laughs> <laughs> Coagulant to help them obtain blood. So depending on the stage of the bed bug, they may feed for as little as three minutes or as long as 10 to 15 minutes. That's scary. That's too long. <laughs> no, they. Ha- I told you they were just like eating me alive. Yeah. I actually sat in the bathroom and cried all night after like Finding I woke one? up because I was in pain because uh-huh. they were just like attacking me. Oh, my God. I don't even... I don't even like to think about it. I was, yeah. I was like 18 years old, you see. Mm-mm, that's scary. I should have just like changed colleges right then. <laughs> I would have I would have moved. I would've and like, my parents out. were in Disney World. Yeah, no, that's horrible. <laughs> and they were so, just like, okay, sorry, you're going to have to deal with it on your own. We're oh in Disney my World. God. I know. The that's mouse, scary. they cared more about the mouse than me. Yeah. I see where I sit. That's <laughs> what happens when you're the youngest. No one gives a shit about you. <laughs> So bed bugs prefer to feed at night on exposed areas. I wonder why that is, though, at night. Um, oh, I don't know. Yeah, you're right. Because that's, that's pretty you know, lucky for them. They prefer to feed at night on exposed areas such as the hands, neck, arms, and face. 
Bed bugs, uh, bed bug bites affect people differently depending on the person and the frequency of the feeding. Bites will eventually produce itchy red bumps and welts on the surface of the skin. Bacterial skin infections may occur due to skin breakage from ex- like from scratching yourself a lot. Yep. Some people have been known to respond to uh, bed bug infestations with insomnia, fear, stress, fear. anxiety, <laughs> and even paranoia, which is all very valid. <laughs> <laughs> that all very valid feelings. Yeah. Sometimes uh, becoming too distressed to sleep due to the fear of being bitten. And the lack of sleep can sometimes trigger depression. Heavy rates of feeding have been known. I'm to- having like PTSD <laughs> flashbacks right now. I got to go I'm lay so down. Sorry. No, I can't lay down. I can't go in. I can't even sit on the couch anymore. I know. Heavy rates of feeding have been known to cause significant blood loss and eventually lead to anemia and other complications. Children are most susceptible to these further problems. Although more than 20 types of diseases have been found in bed bugs, including bacteria, viruses, and worms, they are not known to transmit disease. I think it's because their mouths are too small. Yeah. So they won't, although they found them, they're there. Yeah. (laughs) They won't pass them on to you. So there was a concern when COVID was just starting that could we get COVID from ticks or mosquitoes or bed bugs and you can't. Yeah, no, I think, yeah, they're too I don't tiny. even, I don't think you can get AIDS either. Like, yeah. you can't get AIDS from mosquitoes or ticks or Yeah, so bugs. I think the main thing really with um, bed bugs is, like, skin stuff. Like, yeah. bacterial infection. And just, just pure psychological damage. It's like damage. they tell you not to scratch, like, a mosquito bite. It's like yeah. that type of thing. But yeah. I mean, I really think it's the psychological damage. Yeah. It, I it's feel really, like really that traumatizing. Too. It's so traumatizing. Yeah, I mean, insomnia, fear, stress, and that's a lot of things, you know? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> That it's will affect you for life, as we can see with, with Mary. <laughs> <laughs> I am not... Uh, I'm sure if you had them, you could probably relate. My roommate didn't get them, though. It was only my mattress. That's so sad. I know. And I called them, and they were like, how do you know it's bed bugs? I was like, get here and change out my mattress right now. Like... My parents pay so much intuition for this place. Yeah. And you need to get here right now and fix this. Mm-mm. Oh, it was terrible. It's terrible. Yeah, that sounds horrible. Let's move on now. <laughs> <laughs> let's move on from the bed bugs. They sound horrifying. Um, so now let's talk about fire ants health concerns, which honestly, the, for the fire ants and uh, fruit flies, there's not really much when it comes to but health fire concerns. ants hurt. Yeah, so it fire hurts. ants, um, anyone can develop an allergy to fire ant stings. Although people who've been stung before are at a higher risk, which I don't know that. Which makes you, it's the opposite. You think you'd be more immune if you've been stung before. Exactly, yeah. If you've been stung for, before, it actually increases the risk of like having an allergic reaction. And allergic reactions can be fatal. Yeah. So they can There are people you. who die every year. Yeah. So usually it's little children. Usually the signs of a, a dangerous allergic reaction include, that's a fruit fly right now. I was going to say, are you I'm like swatting. fighting a fruit fly right yeah. now? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, include sudden difficulty breathing, difficulty swallowing, nausea, and dizziness. Sim- Go away. Symptoms <laughs> develop quickly after exposure. It's critical to get emergency medical treatment if you experience signs of an allergic reaction to a fire ant sting. If you have a severe allergy, there are involved long-term treatments, including whole body extract immunotherapy. <laughs> During this process, uh. and if y'all don't know what this is, let me tell you, during this process, an allergist immune, immunologist, very fancy uh, job title, injects ant extract and venom into your skin. So it's, I guess it's basically just like it'll give you a little bit so that over time, like, it just won't affect you. That just like peanut thing. allergies. Yeah, just like that. Yeah. Yeah. So really the main thing with the fire ants is the uh, allergic reactions and obviously very painful stings. And they a lot of them. <laughs> a lot no, of them. No, they're so painful. Mm-hmm. Like, it's not, it's not fun at all. Yeah. I've even gotten bit by them, like, running, because sometimes you'll, like, run through tall grass oh, or yeah. something. Oh, my God. Yeah, no, I hate terrible. getting ant bites. It's very, very horrible. And normal ants bite, too, here in Houston. I don't know what it is about yeah, things. Yeah, yeah. Like, definitely not been even bit. just fire ants, like, yeah. Yeah. Ugh. All right. <laughs> Last but not least. The benign fruit fly. The fruit flies. So, another thing that many people don't realize is that fruit flies aren't just a nuisance. There are actually hidden dangers that most people are unaware of that make these tiny little fruit flies a human health hazard. Wait, I need to interrupt. It's my Aunt Amy said hi to us again. Oh. So <laughs> hi to Aunt Amy. 
She is definitely Hello, our biggest, Aunt Amy. Our biggest <laughs> fan. I, I appreciate it, Aunt Amy. And I will see you soon, actually. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, true. That's, that's true. true. Anyway, continue. Yeah, so... Um, yeah, so there are hidden dangers that most people are unaware of that make these tiny little fruit flies a human health hazard. Dangerous bacteria and other germs can stick to their hairy bodies, <laughs> and it can get on our food or hands yeah. and spread illnesses that can cause health problems, especially diarrhea. Oh, <laughs> cha-cha-cha. I know. So how can you prevent illness from fruit flies? All you can really do is uh, wash your hands. Don't kill them with your hands, or at least try not to. What? Are you kidding me? Actually, That's the only way to kill them. <laughs> That's actually, I do kill them with my hands. <laughs> I do. I like, how, how was I never supposed to find out that you weren't supposed to kill fruit flies? I with, know. Am I supposed to kill them with my elbows? Yeah. <laughs> and then um, <laughs> if, fruit, if fruits and vegetables have been left out unprotected, you should wash them. Yeah. Very okay. Thoroughly. Well, I believe so. That. It doesn't. It didn't really go into detail on like the types of diseases or illnesses that fruit flies carry, but I feel like it's not that serious. I've never gotten sick from a Me fruit either. fly like, that I'm feel aware like of. The chances, knock on wood. The chances of you getting sick from a fruit fly are. I don't know. They're literally being swarmed with fruit flies right now. So. The fruit flies have been a problem. Yes. <laughs> Even in my own house. <laughs> Even in my own house. You know what? Here's a tip, guys. Get some apple cider vinegar. <laughs> Trust me. Chris is about to go ape yeah. with the fruit fly. If you want if you want to get rid of them, just you know, just like naturally just get some apple cider vinegar, put some soap in it, just leave it. It smells horrible. Yeah. But it will kill them. Chris you know, is Chris is I using put, the poison. I put out like a cup a day and every day I look in there there'd be like twenty dead fruit flies. I'm like, where do they even come from? I no, well, they reproduce like yeah. thousands mm -hmm. of fruit it's disgusting. It's so gross. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, not as scary as uh, a lot of the other stuff we've talked about, but definitely nasty. Bed bugs are probably the one I'm scared of the most. Ah, honestly, yeah. Roaches well, German roaches are really gross. You yeah, do they need to are get rid very of gross. They are very gross. Yeah. Actually, that's... But at least they don't, like, come in my sleep. You know, like, I'm sure they can, but dead bugs. I don't know. Yeah, no, that's terrifying. Yeah. They're so hard to get rid of. Yeah. So, all right. So, we talk about that? Yeah, let's talk about it. All right. So, let's start with the roaches. For the German roach, you know, there are roach motels. You've seen those. Oh, I think they have one at the Museum of Natural Science. I used to work there, so that's how I know this, but... Well, yeah, roach motel is like a bait station where they walk in and then they die. They have, like, a whole little thing that's... They're just chilling in there. Okay, well, that's they're living in there. I thought they no, were, like I a thought roach. I was like, that's a hotel. No, no, the <laughs> roach motel is a is where they die. Okay, okay. Like it's called a motel because it looks like a little house. They walk in, they don't walk oh, out. Oh, okay. It's like the Hotel California for roaches. Okay. Yeah, I see. you understood that joke, right? Yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> yeah. Um, so there, you can do it yourself. Like I said, there's bait stations. You can get spray. The biggest, most important thing with the German roaches is you need to keep your house clean. If your house is dirty and has a lot of food or even and animal trash food, trash, yeah, like quarter situations, you're going to get roaches, German roaches. Now, the big uh, tree roaches that we have in Houston, they come in when it's hot because they want to enjoy the air conditioning. <laughs> it's not about a cleanliness issue with the tree yeah. roach. It's a cleanliness issue with the German roach. Okay. If you have an infestation that's so bad you can't get rid of it, that's actually when you call a pest control company. Yes, for sure. And they're going to either use a pesticide and they can also set up bait stations. Okay. Pesticide also works for the tree roach. What they do is they walk over the pesticide. And remember how the video said they clean themselves? And this yeah. is all roaches, not just the tree roach. Yeah. When they clean themselves, they actually clean the pesticide off their antenna and ingest it. And that's how they die. Oh, yeah. interesting. Yeah. So what about the bed bugs? There's a couple different ways to get rid of bed bugs, but this is terrifying. There is no 100% guaranteed way to get rid of bed bugs, except to remove the infected material. Yeah, like you'd probably have to throw the whole furniture away. Yeah. Honestly, that's probably like the best way. Did you ever watch The Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt on Netflix? I know what show you're talking about. Never saw it, though. Okay. But. It's pretty funny. But there's one time they're going down the street and they see a piano and there's like caution bed bugs written all over it. And then they like bring it in their house oh. and it shows Titus like playing the piano, but like spraying at the same time. Oh, no. It's pretty. It's, I guess you had to be there. <laughs> you had to be there. So there's a couple different ways. Um, for Biggest thing is you can buy over the counter stuff for bed bugs, but really it's just a matter of. 
can you even fix it? Like, yeah. honestly, I'd go straight to the exterminator. Me too. And Just don't even waste. I wouldn't waste my time with this over the counter, whatever <laughs> thing if that it, you get from Walmart, you know? Yeah. If it's a mattress or a couch, just chuck it. Don't it's even. It's probably old anyway. Yeah. If it has bed bugs on it. And the exterminator can do a couple different things. He can do a heat, a thermal treatment where they superheat your house. And that's actually found to be pretty effective. They can fumigate it, put a tent over the house. They can do a chemical spray, or they can steam the house. Wow. I know. Um, steam. All of those, again, aren't 100%. Yeah, even then, they might still be there after. Yeah. And we talked about Breaking Bad when they, like, made the meth and then fumigated the yeah, house. Were, I always yeah. think about that whenever yeah, I say fumigation. The yeah. The big old tent. But, um, again, it's really no guaranteed way to get rid of bed bugs, and that's just terrifying. No that's wonder horrible. people are depressed and paranoid. I would be, too. I would not want to go to bed if I knew there was little bugs crawling around it, you know? So I'm glad I didn't know that until years after I had bed bugs, because once I got rid of my mattress, the problem went away. So serious, obviously, it was just in the mattress, yeah. right? But if I had known that they could get into everything, I would have been so paranoid for the rest of the year. I probably would have moved back home and just commuted to school. Like, yeah. I couldn't. Mm-mm. I'm glad I didn't know that. Mm-mm. So what about fire ants? Fire ants, um, again, you want to call the pest control company. Pest yeah. control companies for all of these. Yeah, bugs, yeah. Right? Bugs any in general. These, yeah, any They bugs. don't just deal with termites. Yeah, they do all kinds of bugs. Um, so you want to call your pest control company again for the fire ant. They're going to use a spray or a bait station. They might also remove, because sometimes fire ants take over tree stumps or, you know, dead, like, parts of a garden or something. They might actually remove all of that as well. Okay. Just to get rid of the source. Yeah. What about fruit flies? Now, this is... I, I, I actually misspoke. You really don't need an exterminator for fruit flies. Yeah, yeah. Fruit flies is just... You can take care of that yourself, yes. honestly. Get rid of uh, trash that's laying out. Yeah. That's the biggest thing. Sometimes they get in your trash can. Just throw out the trash and clean the trash can. You can use bleach or vinegar to tr- clean the trash can. Um, if they get really bad, you can buy those sticky traps yeah the ones you hang from the ceiling yeah i have that i have that in my house right now we've put them in our plants before because sometimes they'll attack our potted plants i think they killed my plant really yeah i had a plant right by my sink it died and And i think i think they had to do with it um (laughs) (laughs) or i'm just really bad at taking care of that uh yeah well that 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 actually might be more likely (laughs) um but yeah, the fruit flies, you don't really need an exterminator, although Chris is going to go full exterminator on the fruit yeah, flies. Yeah, this, this Friday, I think. Yeah. On Friday. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Chris actually holds a pest control license. Yes. That doesn't mean he does any pest control except for like our personal he stuff. He can, though. He, he can. can. So we have the chemicals, so he's going to blitz the fruit flies because they're pretty bad in this in this place. Yeah, they got better, like a little bit better after they cleaned. Yeah. It's not as bad, but there's still some stragglers. They're, they're still there. They need to be bombed. So yeah. that's what Chris is going to do. So you can definitely, if you re- have a really bad situation, like like this situation, and I guess I you like could. If they're really bad, it's usually because you have trash. Yeah, that's or, like, really what it comes down around. to. Or it's like soda cans. Yeah, like anything li- like sticky. and Yeah, they love that sugar. As we know, 8,000 years ago, when they first emerged from the cave. They, they love that sugar high. They love that sugar. <laughs> that watermelon sugar high. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was thinking of. <laughs> Some Harry Styles in there. That's a really good song. Although yeah, it's really... It, an, have you seen the music video? Uh, I haven't seen the video. Oh, oh my God, <laughs> ECs. First I've of all, what song, he's doing to that watermelon is inappropriate, Okay. Uh, yeah, all right. that's all I'm going to say. That's all you got to say. That's all I got to say. So I didn't know that was an actual watermelon. <laughs> I know. I know. Um, on that note, is it time for credits? It's time for credits. It is time for credits. So our intro is called Cockroach Infestation by National Geographic. Our music credit is Kevin McLeod of Incontent. Our source credit is Texas A&M and the Smithsonian. Nice. Yeah. Texas A&M actually has um, a whole department on, um, like, bugs and stuff wow i know isn't that weird that's interesting yeah our some of our guys have actually done their termite training with oh. a&m yeah um you cool. can check us out on youtube at a action home inspection group houston on facebook on instagram at home inspector underscore texas and on tiktok at houston home inspector our next topic which i'm not going to say is next week because it's not it's, it's going to be in august oh no it's going to be in july yeah next month sometime. next month yeah we'll be on yeah. rodents Ew. Yeah. Even scarier, honestly, than bugs. Really? 
Mm, I feel like it depends on the rodent. It de- like it depends on the rodent. When I was in D.C., parts of Georgetown, I I am not joking. I actually saw them with my own eyes. The rats are like the size of Benny. They were humongous. Oh no. Yeah. They were humongous. And at night, you'd be walking home, and you'd hear, like, rattling in the dumpster, and it would be, oh like, my giant gosh. rats. Have you ever seen the possums outside at night? No. I've seen them here, like... They're bad. I'd be, like, at my old apartment, I would come home at night, and they'd just be, like, on the fence, just <laughs> just walking. You know, possums aren't bad, though. They're actually they're, really good. They're ugly. They're good. <laughs> they, well, they are really ugly and scary, but yeah. apparently they, like, um, they... People think they carry rabies, but they don't. Oh, you know what I need to look up is a rodent. Sorry for the digression. Armadillo. Oh. Uh, because I, I saw one the other day. It ran oh, in front yeah, of my car. Me, you told me this, yeah. Yeah. You told me the other day. Is an armadillo a rodent? Apparently, I'm not the only one to ask that question. It's a mammal. It is not a rodent okay. or a marsupial or related to the opossum. They belong to the Sigaluda family and their closest living relatives are sloth and ant eaters. Oh, that's kind of cute. They are. The, They're so not ugly. They no. are. They actually to me kind of look like rats wearing a football helmet. They have a little cuteness to them. Like I wouldn't touch one, but so <laughs> armadillo stuffed animals are really cute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I actually have an armadillo lamp upstairs. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. And you know, I think the armadillo is like the official animal of Texas, which says a lot for Texas interesting yeah yeah i don't even know so <laughs> well there you have it there you have i'm mary <laughs> and i'm ec and we're the home girls and we'll chat with you next time on rodents which are not armadillos yes <laughs> <laughs> all right thank you so much for joining us on live uh for this home girls season three episode seven we will see you in july when we talk about rodents have a great fourth of july <laughs>